without, without a country to call your home, without a voice to represent you, without documentation of your very identity. I say it again, as they are more commonly referred to in Arabic, al Bedoun. The origins of the Bedoun are rooted in the earliest days of Kuwaiti history. The first Bedoun were a group of people who claimed Kuwaiti citizenship, but had never held any, and had never held any other form of citizenship. This group was made up of desert nomads, or Bedouins, not to be confused with Bedoun, who settled in Kuwait prior to 1959. The significance of this year lies in Kuwaiti law, as it marks the year in which Ku Kuwait put, first put into action nationality laws. In, uh, with these nationality laws, the Kuwaiti government asked all, na all, all residents of the time to register. And those first Bedoun were eligible for citizenship, but they did not register because they did not know. They did not know about the law. They could not read and write, therefore making it impossible for them to register or they did not keep proper documentation of themselves, which additionally made it impossible for them to register. These circumstances left this group, who was essentially Kuwaiti, unknown and without formal citizenship, to any country, making them the first without, or Bedouin. The Bedouin class today, however, has evolved to be a much more complex mix of ethnicities and cultures. These developments are a result of the volatile nature of the Bedouin numbers throughout Kuwait's history. Their numbers have been up and down and all over since the 80s, where their numbers were estimated to be around 200,000, in comparison to today, where Kuwait's Central Agency for the Remedying of Illegal Residences Status estimates their numbers to be around 90,000. People from across the Arabian Peninsula and beyond migrating in and out of Kuwait for more than 50 years to eventually become Bedouin, thus leaving us today with people of Syrian, Iraqi, Jordanian, and Saudi Arabian origin who are contributing to Kuwait's modern Bedouin population. But why, would people, but why would people who already have citizenship to other nations come to Kuwait to be a classified as stateless? They came, motivated by the benefits given to Kuwaitis, which include free health care, free schooling at all levels, free housing, and a multitude of other government subsidies, which they hope to achieve by being classified as Bedouin. However, the issue which we face today with the Bedouin in society is that we have a group who is not contributing positively, positively to society, and the society is enabling that behavior. The issue has stemmed from the downward spiral which the Bedouin are placed into. The spiral begins with the Bedouin being refused their security ID. This security ID is the Bedouin equivalent of a civil ID. If a Bedouin is not possession of a security ID, they are unable to register themselves in a place of business, they are unable to, to open a bank account, and they are even unable to renew their driver's licenses. Next, the current system which regulates the Bedouin in Kuwait does not encourage them to work to sustain themselves or their place in society. What I mean by this is that, thankfully, all Bedouin are provided basic health care and education as per decree of the Council of Ministers in 2011. This decree, yes, from a humanitarian perspective, greatly helps the Bedouin, but it also plays into the spiral by eliminating the pressing need for the system to issue identification to the Bedouin in order for them to work, as the system then provides the Bedouin with the basic necessities they need to live. The Bedouin are then hopeless and have nowhere to turn except to the government welfare. The spiral then ending with the Bedouin without skills, without the skills or education to work as they have never spent as they've never been in a work setting or spent significant time outside of a work setting. Let's imagine the situation. You, as a Bedouin, want to provide for your family, but you cannot get the security ID, so you're now unable to register in a place of business. Now you are unable to find income to support your family. Your only alternative, the welfare system. As a result of, as a result of remaining on the welfare system for so long as time went on, you lost your skills. You were unable to hone your education and your skills in the workforce. And you eventually lost your drive to work. My first-hand experience interacting with the Bedouin demonstrated to me the gravity of the situation for many of them. This should not be misconstrued as me saying that all Bedouin don't work and do not contribute. Some Bedouin do in fact work and contribute to society in their own way. But a majority, including the ones which I spoke to, do not. 
They live in prefab homes of three to five rooms, ranging from anywhere from four to 20 men, women, and children living in those homes. The morale of these people, these women, these men that I spoke to was destroyed. They could not find work, and in some cases were so distraught with their reality, lost the drive to work entirely. And it is Kuwait's welfare nature which enables them to do that. People who could be working and contributing and providing are being shut out and are therefore living on welfare without the chance to give anything back. Whether or not the families who I met, or any Badoon for that matter, deserve citiz Kuwaiti citizenship is irrelevant. They are stuck, being treated as and acting as an economic, social, and safety liability. That is why, moving forward, we must begin to look to us towards a solution which can change the Badoon from burden to resource. However you believe the Badoon citizenship problem should be addressed, there is common ground which we can all agree upon. We must practice compassion and provide the basic necessities for all of these individuals to become productive members of society. All Badoon must be registered and be given identification so that they are allowed the opportunity to work and earn a living. Kuwait right now is stable, growing, and most importantly, able to address this issue. That is why the Badoon should no longer be without, but with documentation, with jobs, and with Kuwait. Thank you.